Well, congrats to Syracuse. Um, you know, we, we, they're a good basketball team that hadn't played well. Um, they've lost some close games like us, but they're an older team, they're a veteran team, and they're a team that can really score the basketball. Um, I thought we got off to a good start, and I thought we played well up until the under four minute timeout in the first half. <laughs> that moment for the rest of the game, I thought our offense uh, and not being able to make shots and turning the basketball over really affected our defense. And, you know, we didn't defend well for the last, for the last part of the first half and then the whole second half, which led to us really being very poor offensively. Um, and so, you know, a learning experience for us, you know, we, 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 we cannot, we talk about it all the time. We can't let our offense, our inability to, to not make a shot um, affect what we do defensively. I didn't think we talked well on the defensive end. I thought there were moments where we didn't compete well on that side of the floor. And you can't do that period, but especially against an outstanding offensive team like Syracuse. So congrats to them. Jeff, was there anything that I guess kind of changed in those final four minutes in the in the first half from what they were doing defensively? No. Jeff, what if uh, what if anything was Syracuse doing defensively on John? Uh, you know, he had eight points, one of six from the field. What if anything were they doing for uh, for him not to be quite as big of a factor as he's been in previous conference games? Yeah, well, they play a zone. And so the zone kind of packs the defense in. There's not a lot of space in there. Um, and then with our inability uh, to shoot the basketball and make shots from out there, they started packing it in a little bit more. Um, but the zone at times can be difficult for, you know, a post guy to get, you know, touches right there near the basket. The zone is kind of designed maybe to take that away and get to shooters. And when you don't, you know, have some shooters, then that kind of makes the zone a little bit tighter. Jeff, last year when you guys faced Syracuse, you guys were able to slash through a lot, a, a lot of that. Was there, was there, was there any talk about tr other ways to try to break open the zone to find ways to sort of back to force Syracuse to spread out a little bit more, or was it? Yeah, no, it, it no, we were a very different team last year, and so there were things that we could do last year that this team cannot do. We, we just don't have the ability to do that. Um, and so, again, I thought we executed well the first half. We, we shot 50% from the floor. Um, you know, we got the ball at the high post. We made some shots. You know, we were on the offensive glass. But then the last 351 of the first half and then the whole second half, we just, you know, we had some of the same looks. We didn't make them, um, you know, and, and that deflated us. And I didn't think that we were, you know, as together as we need to be. But I hope everyone real like we're a completely different team than the team that played Syracuse last year. And so the stuff that we did last year that was effective against it, um, you know, we're a different team now. And so we have to do and concentrate on what this team can do. And we did we did it well for a while, but we weren't able to sustain it. For three of Oh, sorry. You go ahead. Jeff, I know you talked about the, the lack of shooters, but was there a times uh, in the second half where you thought your guys were a little too passive? You know, the zone, I, I thought the zone in the second half at times made us, made us, yeah, made us hesitant, made us stand. That's what this zone can do at times. You know, it makes you stand and, and, and it, it can affect you defensively too, because it's a slower pace and you know, you're, you're spending time moving the basketball side to side, trying to get it inside and out. Um, so at times I did think that we were a little bit hesitant. I, I, I just thought that we didn't, you know, to me the biggest thing was what we did the last 23 minutes of the game defensively. That, that's the biggest disappointment because we've been pretty good defensively for most of the year. And again, they have some outstanding players. Bayheim can really score. Buddy can really score. Uh, Jimmy has scored it well all year. Swider has scored it well. Um, 
and we just didn't do a good job there. We ran into screens. We, our switches weren't on time when we needed to switch. The communication wasn't good. So at times we switched and we had two on the ball and then we didn't block out because we had two on the ball. We, you know, would black a ball screen or be up in hard heads, which is what the black is for us. And then we didn't run back off of it. I mean, it was just all those things. And you can't do that. You can't do that um, and beat a good team, especially at their place, and was, especially with the way they scored a ball. Jeff, for three of your of your five starters tonight, uh, this is their first time facing this uh, this uh, zone. How much of an impact do you think that had? And for guys who have never faced this zone, for as much as they can study it, how difficult can that be if you've never seen it or faced it on the court before? I mean, it is different. It's difficult. It's different. But again, we got off to a good start. The previous three years that I've been here, we've not gotten off to good starts here at Syracuse but we've been able to fight and to battle back and to put ourselves in a position to win once we got adjusted to it. I thought we got off to a good start. And so I don't think it was necessarily that. I just think our inability to make some shots, you know, affected everything. It, it, it affected our confidence. It affected what we did defensively. We didn't talk as well as we need to talk. And the energy level wasn't what it needs to be. With Nate making two uh, late three-pointers in the game, does that uh, give him a chance to work his way into the rotation? He always has a chance to work his way into rotation. We have practices every day, um, you know, and things like that. And so, you know, we think Nate's a good player. He's helped us this year. and We think he can help us going forward. But those things are earned by what you do in practice on a day-to-day -day basis, not just because he made two shots today. I think Nate's a really good shooter. I think he's going to be an outstanding player. I love him. Glad that he's in our program but he's got a chance every day to, 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 to help us. I thought Chris came in in the last minute, 21, at least he talked and he played with an energy defensively. I don't think it's a coincidence. We got to stop that he was in there because he was the guy that was talking. So hopefully that, that, that's something that can bleed over and, and, and to practice the next few days. And, you know, maybe we can have another guy that can be able to help us on Saturday. Jeff speaking generally, what can a coach do uh, when, it, when his team is, can't hit shots against his own? We got to play better defense. We can't let what we do offensively affect what we do defensively. We can't elect one. We can't allow one part of the game to affect the whole part of the game, and that's where we have to be a little bit more mature. So, better defense could trigger the offense. Then, usually, when you play good defense, that leads to pretty good offense. Usually, when you're talking and you're connected, that leads to you talking and being connected on the offensive end as well. It, it goes hand in hand. No, you guys. No, no, you go ahead, Jim. You guys have, uh, you know, leaned on John a lot lately. And so how hard was it tonight to, you know, get him the ball against that 2-3 zone? Uh, was, you know, it was definitely difficult, especially because of their length. You know, their uh, they guys really tall. Uh, big wingspans on arms and everything like that. So even if he was open, sometimes it was hard just to, to try and make the right pass, you know, because sometimes they're – just their length, just messed up the vision and everything like that. But, you know, we tried our best to get the ball down to him because we know he's our best offensive threat. So, you know, every game, that's kind of what we try to do in order to get our offense going. Because he's, he's a big help last game, you know. Mo, what no, – sorry for cutting you off there, Mo. Um, jumped in a little bit too soon there. But what to you – Seem like the biggest defensive shortcomings for uh, for y'all tonight, especially there in the second half when Syracuse kind of broke the game open. Um, we just we, we just didn't, didn't fight hard enough, you know. Hey, I'll take responsibility and back it's plays that uh, that Rod just gave us possessions, you know, letting the offensive end of our game determine how the defensive end of our game goes, you know. And we knew this game was going to be a game of runs. They, you know, they, they shoot three, so of course they're going to go on their runs. We're going to let that, you know, determine the game. But, yeah. Mo, um, Syracuse two three zone is considered unique uh, in college basketball. Have you, have you ever seen anything like it in your time? No, no. Especially because, of, like I said earlier, how tall the guys are. You know, you got six, you got six nine. Seven foot, pretty much six seven. You know, 
and they were really good at, especially trap and short corners and everything like that. It is a really unique zone. It was difficult to play against tonight. Mo, it's really seemed early on like you were finding you guys were finding answers against the zone. You were hitting shots from the outside. Uh, you guys were able to work it underneath a few times. What changed in the second half that made it harder for you guys to react to what they were doing? Um, I'm gonna speak for myself personally. You know, um, a big thing that our coaches preached and wanted us to make sure to do is we put the ball in the high post just to be patient. You know, because in the first half. We was being patient in the high post and even just making passes, pass faking and everything like that. And we kind of got what we wanted. And even if we didn't get the shot we wanted, we missed, we was able to crash and get offensive rebounds. But in the second half, we were a little sped up. I was sped up, uh, you know, just making bad decisions, uh, forcing sh uh, shots we didn't need, you know. Kind of just got sped up in that second half. Mo, uh, you had a, a jumper with about 10 minutes left in the second half. That was uh, that was your team's first made shot of that half. When you when you as a team go so long without scoring, without seeing the ball go through, what kind of, of an effect mentally and practically can that have on players? Well, you know, in, in basketball in general, the ball doesn't go in the hoop, few possessions. You know, it, it's not surprising if the team – holds their head down just a little bit, you know, and that's the thing our coaches keep trying to, you know, get into our mind and everything like that. We can't, we can't let our offensive end determine defensive end because the shots are going to fall eventually, you know, and it, it's a game of runs. So they can have their run. We might not have our run, but if we stay consistent on defense, we can keep the, 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 the margin, the uh, difference in points close enough to when we finally do hit our shots. We're right there. We have the lead. And in the first half, there was a point I think they were up 10 and then with like 3.15 going into halftime, I think we were up seven. So, you know, we, that's a big thing. I'm not trying to let how the offense goes in terms of defense. Mo, this, I mean, after so many close, uh, after so many close losses, this was really your all's first lopsided one. Um, you know, I, I guess it's it's obviously tough, uh, tough to predict here, but how do you think rebounding from this game will be different than trying to come back from, from very close one point, three point losses? I mean, I don't think it'll be that different, you know, because we have this game. We had this game, you know, first half, the way we were playing, you know, it was a game that was very winnable. We just continued to do the things that we were supposed to do and everything like that and not let up. So rebounding from this, it won't be that different, you know. We have a hungry team. We don't come in every day to just play and then, you know, want to walk out with a, with a loss, you know, try and come and win every single game we can. So. There's always fighting us. There's always fighting us, you know, and that's gonna just that's just gonna how we're gonna be. Fight until we get a win every single time we come to play.